What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since I made a video, but today I'm gonna be yapping, I'm gonna be talking, I'm gonna be talking about the UEFA Champions League round of eight, aka the quarterfinals. I don't know why the hell I said round of eight. Round of 16 just happened a couple days ago. Uh, obviously, the teams that went through are Atletico Madrid, Dortmund, Barca, PSG, Arsenal, Bayern City, and Real Madrid. And we're going to be talking about my predictions for these quarterfinals. These are some of the best looking quarterfinals we've had in a while, honestly. Uh, the matchups are pretty insane. We have Atletico versus Borussia Dortmund, which is probably the worst one of the matchups, but it'll still be a decent game. Barcelona versus PSG, which completes the left side of the bracket. I expect one of these teams to make the final and i'll tell you which one on the other side of the bracket we have arsenal versus bayern there's been a lot of huge games between these two these two uh teams in the past champions leagues and city versus real madrid probably the biggest game of the quarterfinals we have been given this matchup three years in a row so yeah let's get started on it make sure before i start the video guys make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and yeah back with consistent content let's do it man okay so first of all let's talk about arsenal versus bayern now the thing with arsenal is they're hyping them up a lot right now they barely snuck past porto over on penalties at the emirates which goes to show that they don't really have that champions league pedigree quite yet they've never won a ucl Chelsea has two, of course, the best team in London, even though we are so bad right now. But yeah, back to Arsenal. Um, Their team, their team is pretty stacked now. They've really built their team very well under Arteta. And in that game against Porto, they should have had more goals. They did definitely miss their chances. But defensively, they were not as solid as I expected that they would have been against the Portuguese side. Um, Conceição, the, the Porto coach, really got Arsenal's number. I, I think they should have had two or three goals themselves as well. Porto could have easily been in these quarterfinals against Bayern if it not if it were not for their poor finishing. I can't freaking talk right now. My tongue's twisted. But at the end of the day, Arsenal made it through. They are one of the two English teams that are still in the running. And they might honestly be a dark horse this year. You see, Arsenal, they don't have any freaking Champions League pedigree. But the way this team gels, you could tell how um how much they like each other on the pitch. You could tell the dressing room has a fantastic atmosphere. No player is salty, except for maybe Aaron Ramsdale. I know we've seen those clips of freaking Mikel Arteta looking disgusted at whenever Aaron Ramsdale celebrated or anything. That guy hates Ramsdale, but he loves his goalkeeper, David Raya. David Raya is cracked. He did fantastic in that game. He started very shaky at Arsenal, but he's grown into the starting position. Um, obviously, in the game, he got the, prun the crucial penalty saves against Porto. I believe Galeno missed the final one, and... He was just outstanding in that game. Um, as it goes for their lineup, I mean, they have Ben White, David Raya, Saliba, Gabriel, Kivior. They have Declan Rice. They could get Thomas Party back in that. Also a bit of um, uh, Martin Odegaard, of course, who is one of their main men. They have Jorginho. Kai Havertz could play in the middle. Up top, Gabriel Jesus, Martinelli, Saka, Trossard, Enketia, Reese Nelson, Emil Smith-Rowe every now and then. I mean, their team is freaking stacked, man. That is a team that if they went on to win the UCL, you wouldn't really be so surprised because they do have an outstanding squad with a very good manager. It's just, will the ghosts of the past haunt them against a very uh, UCL experienced Bayern team that most of those players on that team have actually won the treble before with Hansi Flick about three, four years ago. However... They now have a manager who is confirmed to be leaving at the end of the season, which is Thomas Tuchel, freaking up the Chelsea man, one of the best Chelsea managers of all time. Why the hell did we get rid of him anyways? I need to stop yapping about that. But they don't seem to have the best dressing room atmosphere, but they won very convincingly against Lazio in their previous game after having lost the first leg. So this matchup, I mean, comparing Raya to Neuer, I would take Neuer. Kimmich at right back over Ben White, in my opinion. Uh, Kim Min Jae and uh, Delict are very evenly matched with Saliba and Gabriel. I think they could handle the Arsenal front four, front three very well of Saka, Havertz, and Trossard with the left back Davies. As long as they don't play freaking Eric Dyer in that back line, they should be all right to go. And I mean, the midfield speaks for itself. They have Goretzka and this new guy Pavlovich who I've never even freaking heard of but Thomas Tuchel seems to like him a lot I'm not gonna lie I don't watch the Bundesliga whatsoever I just watch the Champions League and that's where I get my Bundesliga knowledge from or the Europa League every now and then uh at the 10 Thomas Muller he was outstanding in their last game against Lazio and on the wings he prefers Leroy Sané and Jamal Musiala seems like Tuchel doesn't really like Serge Gnabry and of top of course 
in my opinion, the second best striker in the world, if not the best striker in the world, Harry Kane. He just can't stop scoring. So in this matchup, honestly, it's pretty tough. It's probably the second best matchup in this round of eight in this quarterfinals, but I'm going to have to go with Bayern. I think Bayern will beat Arsenal just simply because of their Champions League winning pedigree. I believe they have like six Champions League or something crazy like that. Thomas Tuchel will get his revenge on Arsenal, and I think Bayern will go through with the aggregate score of like 5-3, something like that. It'll be high-scoring games, but Bayern goes through to the semis on that side. And on to the next game, let's talk about Barcelona versus PSG. We're on the other side of the bracket now. Obviously, two very evenly matched teams in terms of um, squads and rosters, you know. Play the same formation, 4-3-3. Uh, two managers that must know each other very well, Xavi and Luis Enrique, both out of La Masia. Same with Arteta and Arsenal. La Masia low-key dominating the Champions League right now. Not even going to lie. Even though I hate Barca, it has to be said. It has to be acknowledged. Uh, Ter Stegen, freaking goalkeeper. Probably the best goalkeeper in the world at the moment, if not for Jano Black. Uh, their back line consists of Jules Kunde, Araujo, Kubarsi, who was outstanding against Napoli, apparently. I was watching the other game, but my Barca friend, uh, he told me Kubarsi is one of the best talents in the world. I'll believe him. Uh, at left back, Joao Cancelo on loan from City, obviously. What a freaking back line that is. And Barca did very well against Napoli in that second leg. So they do have a lot of momentum now. There seems to be more belief in the Catalan side now that they got over the Napoli hurdle after tying with them in the Stadio Diego Armando Maradona Stadium. But um, And they're looking forward to having their midfielders back. I mean, the guys that stepped up did a fantastic job. And Fermin Lopez he even got a goal for freaking Barca, the first goal of the game against Napoli. Andreas Christensen, who I don't know why the hell we let go for free from Chelsea, can actually do a job at the six. Is a very good uh, defensive midfielder for Barca. And then um, Ilkay Gundogan, the Champions League winning captain from last year. That's a very solid midfield, even for being full of backups. And then up top, they have Lamine Yamal, one of the best up-and-coming young footballers in the world. He's freaking clutch. He's so good at the game, man. And he's freaking 16 years old. That's ridiculous. Bro's probably taking his SAT after the game against Napoli. And then we have Robert Lewandowski at striker inevitable that he's going to score at least once in this tie and at left wing Rafinha who's coming into good form so on the bench obviously Barca have a very talented team that will be back from injury they have Ferran Torres, Victor Roque, Frankie de Jong, Pedri, Orion Romeo who's kind of a meme player now for them uh, freaking Johnny Sins in that in that midfield they have uh, Mark Guyu and Joao Felix a lot of Chelsea boys in this team but um I mean, damn, what a freaking squad. You expect this team to be able to beat PSG. The thing is, the enigma on PSG, Kylian Mbappe. PSG have the best player in the world, and the players around him, some are quality, some are very inexperienced in the UCL, but they have a UCL experience manager, so I just cannot gauge how this PSG team will go in the UCL against Barcelona, especially in the quarterfinals, a huge match. Let's just go through their squad. Gianluigi Donnarumma can be world-class on his day, can produce some howlers as well, as we saw two years ago with Karim Benzema stealing the ball from him. At right back, Hakimi, arguably one of the best right backs in the world. The two center backs, Marquinhos, who I think is very overrated. I don't think he is world class. I think he's a good defender for League on, but in the Champions League, he always manages to freaking choke. The other center back, one of the most underrated players in the world, could play center back or left back, World Cup winner, of course, Lucas Hernandez. And then at left back, one of my favorite up and coming left backs even though he had a big injury he's been outstanding for about two three years now and he's only like 21 22 nuno mendes we all remember that meme noon minch in the euros uh, the midfield it's interesting to say the least they have vitinha who is a pretty decent portuguese player he's on the national team ugarte a good uh, strong six you know how he was freaking destroying messi and Rodrigo De Paul in the Copa America or in the qualifier or something like that. He did a funny little thing to Messi. And then Zaire Emery, one of the best up-and-coming talents in the world. He's an outstanding player, very quality to have. He's from their freaking academy. And then their front three, two of them are pretty unconvincing so far, but obviously killing Mbappe is the best out of the three of the front French trio. They have Usman Dembele and Kolo Mouani at right wing and striker, and obviously the main man Mbappe at left wing, the difference maker. The guy who absolutely obliterated Real Sociedad. 
a team that he's sure to face in the coming years when he goes to freaking Real Madrid and builds a new Galacticos. On the bench, they actually have some decent firepower. I mean, Bradley Barcola scored in the first leg against Real Sociedad. Gonzalo Ramos, we obviously know he's a powerful goal scorer for Portugal and for PSG. He can do the job off the bench. Uh, Beraldo, the new uh, Brazilian center back slash left back, who honestly did a very good job for PSG so far. Kangin Lee, who's another underrated player, and Carlos Soler. So who knows will this psg project of dumping brand new like younger players into the squad and seeing how they flourish under a very good manager with um some star power up top will it work against barcelona i personally don't think so i think mbappe will get maybe two three goals over the tie however i don't think it will be enough uh psg's center backs just do not convince me simply because of marquinhos and their midfield could maybe get ran over by barca's midfield when pedri and frankie de Jong come back uh, Lewandowski is a lethal finisher. I think he'll destroy Marquinhos and Donnarumma is bound to make a mistake as well. So I see Barca going through in this tie with another score of 5-3. So Barca's in the semis as well. And on to the next tie. We'll go through this more boring one very quickly. Atletico Madrid versus Borussia Dortmund. I see Atletico Madrid as the clear favorites. Yes, Borussia Dortmund did quite well to advance uh, against PSV to the quarterfinals. They were the clear favorites in that tie. But um, it's nice to see some of their former stars beginning to shine once again for Borussia Dortmund. I mean, I'm wearing their kit right now. If you could tell, I have Marco Ruiz on the back. Uh, I love this freaking black kit from Borussia Dortmund. I like a lot of Borussia Dortmund players. It's just I don't want them to go through to the semifinals because that would be very boring to see. However, obviously, we have to acknowledge uh, Jaden Sancho back in form. Looks like he got injured in the game that he scored on in the UCL round of 16. But hopefully he's back for the quarterfinals because he's honestly such a talented player. And I, I want to see him perform on the biggest stage because Man United freaking ruined him, man. Yeah, I don't believe the rumors about him being lazy, unfit and all that. It seems like he's a disciplined young man and that he could honestly do the job in the Champions League in the biggest stage. They bought him for freaking like 100 million for a reason. He's very talented out of the Man City Academy as well. Uh, Marco Royce back on the scoring board off the bench. I honestly didn't watch the game, didn't even watch the highlights, so I'm guessing he played good because he scored. And just going over the rest of the Borussia Dortmund team, they have Gregor Kobel, who I only know from um, from Ultimate Team being 86 rated, so I guess he's pretty good. I've never seen him play. Nicolas Sula, the most unorthodox right back of all time. Bro's like six foot five, cannot move, and tries to do skill moves every single game, so he's a pretty funny, lanky player to have at right back. The two center backs are, one of them is makeshift, Emre Chan, one of the most underrated players um, in the past 5-10 years, he's been very good at every team. He's been at, at Liverpool, Juventus, now Borussia Dortmund. He's a quality player. He could do the job in many positions on the pitch. And then Mats Hummels was starting to perform very well once again, maybe coming into a late prime, such as Thiago Silva's late prime that he's coming to. Pepe, he's one of those players that stands the test of time despite his physical uh uh, his physical limitations he's still a very smart technical player world cup winner i believe champions league winner with Bayern. i'm not sure but quality player uh he knows what it is to play in the champions league all right i'm gonna keep, stop yapping about matt's homos at left back we have ian mattson on loan from chelsea why the hell did we let him go we freaking need a left back. Kukureya and Ben Chilo have not been good enough. But that's another topic for another day. In the midfield, Oskar and Savitzer, they're pretty decent little players. Marco Royce, Brandt, Sancho, and Fulkrug to complete the front four. Some firepower off the bench. Uh, Daniel Malin, Adeyemi, Haller, Bino Gittins, and, and Mecha. They could make an impact off the bench, especially against Atletico Madrid's slow back line. So I still don't have them passing. Atletico Madrid should pass. Come on. Come on, Simeone. That's... That's a pretty straightforward draw. They should have their flights booked to the semifinals. As long as Morata and Griezmann finish their chances. If not, Memphis Depay will come off the bench to finish the job. They have Llorente, Coque, Depaul, Riquelme, Molina, Oblak. I hate their back line. It's so slow. Savage, Witzel, and Hermoso. Hermoso, I actually think, is pretty decent. But besides that, off the bench, I mean, they have some options like Depay, Lino, Correa, Saul, Renildo. We know how Atletico Madrid plays. They're so defensive, but I think they'll be through and play Barcelona in the uh semi-finals so i have atletico madrid passing against Borussia Dortmund with the aggregate scoreline of 3-1 then ran out of storage i had to reset it real quick bro board problems but now we have the last uh quarterfinal roundup it's man city versus real madrid this is obviously going to be the best freaking game of the tie these teams are so freaking stacked 
but we do have to take into account that Real Madrid does have a lot of injuries since the start of the season. They've still managed to be outstanding in the Champions League, except for that last game against RB Leipzig, in which they didn't look too convincing, as Leipzig honestly should have won the game with the chances that... um. What the hell is that guy's name that Lois Openda had? But nevertheless, thank God Real Madrid made it too because I couldn't stand being able to see Man City reach the semifinals after facing against freaking Copenhagen and then RB Leipzig. That would have been horrible. But other than that, let's go to their lineups and compare them. Lunin versus Ederson. Lunin has been very good stepping up. He's freaking misplaced Kepa. He's replaced him. Kepa's so bad. He's such a bad goalkeeper. I'm glad Lunin stepped up for... The gigantic club that is Real Madrid. Jesus, I sound like I'm glazing right now, bro. But um, Ederson obviously takes this one. I don't know if he's still injured. I don't think so. Stefan Ortega is a great backup as well, but Ederson takes this one. At right back, City play that weird formation. Uh, we'll play John Stones against Carvajal. I honestly think uh, Carvajal takes this as he's a natural right back. I like him better. The two center backs, Rudiger and Nacho against Walker or Diaz. You could switch Stones in with Walker. It has to be Walker and Rudiger as the best ones. And at left back, we have Ferlin Mendy and Manuel Akanji. Mendy could sometimes be the one of the best left backs in the world. And another day, he could produce an absolute stinker. So in this case, I'm still going to go with Manuel Akanji or Nathan Ake because they're more reliable, more consistent. And then when we move into midfield, we have another conundrum. Freaking amazing players all around. Madrid have Valverde, Chuameni, Cruz, Camavinga, Modric off the bench. They could get Brahim Diaz in at the number 10. Arda Guler just got his first goal. Who knows? He might make an impact in this game as well off the bench. And then Man City is just unbelievable. They have Rodri, Bernardo Silva, and Kevin De Bruyne. Arguably the best 6, 8, and 10 in world football in one midfield. It's unbelievable, man. Unreal team. Uh, they have Julian Alvarez, Phil Foden, and Erling Haaland in attack. Arguably Foden and Haaland, two of the best five attackers in the world at this moment in one team as well. And same thing with Real Madrid. Jude Bellingham, Vinny Jr., the two strikers, and then Rodrigo can produce that magic off the bench. Or if they take away a midfielder, he could very easily slot into that starting 11 and be a lethal option on the right wing. So insanely evenly matched teams. This is honestly the hardest one to decide on who's going to go through. But... My gut is telling me to play Man City through in a very tight draw um, over the two legs. I think Man City might go through, but my heart is telling me Real Madrid. And I'm not a Madrid fan, but you just cannot count out Real Madrid in the UCL. Bellingham is coming into one of the best players in the world. That didn't even make sense. He's becoming one of the best players in the world this season. It's tough, man. But just looking at the lineups... Despite Real Madrid's rich history, I think Man City will make another semifinal. So they will go through with the aggregate scoreline of 6-5, I would say. Actually, 6-6, and then they go to penalties, and Man City win it on pens. How crazy would that be? But yeah, my semifinals are going to be Atletico Madrid versus Barca, and on the other side, Bayern versus City. That's what it's going to be, man. Watch this video back after April to see my correct semifinal prediction. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought of the predictions. Were they bozo? Were they dumb? Were they insane? Am I the best? Am I the GOAT like Ronaldo? Let me know in the comments down below. Comment what other type of videos you guys want to see. I have some other ones planned for the next few days as well. But it's great to be back. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. How do you guys like the new backdrop with absolutely nothing on it? Is it cleaner? We'll see. We might have to get some posters or some freaking trophies up here. To show that this is the GOAT football channel. But yeah, if you want to subscribe and see more Yap sessions in the future, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one, and peace.